we have Jerry and Brantley, right? That's how you say Yep, Brantley. Brantley. Mm -hmm. And Brantley's my neighbor. So this is a Kung Fu versus Muay Thai match. The Kung Fu guy is in red, just got punched in the face. So, um, oh, look at that spin kick. Wow. So um, uh, this is quite an interesting match because we don't know what style of Kung Fu. And guys, this takes place in Thailand. So again, um, oh, he's, he's um, I think he dazed the Muay Thai guy. Again, Muay Thai guy in blue. And this looks like, Brantley, this looks like it's MMA because he was trying uh -huh. to grapple, take him to the ground. So we always wonder how two striking styles would do on the ground. So, oh, Kung Fu guy slipped somehow. Um, ooh, have you uh, ever trained any Kung Fu? I haven't trained any, but mm. uh, I, I was in Thailand about a year and a half ago, wow. and I saw uh, some of these Muay, Muay Thai fights in person. Wow. And man, it's it's a lot more intense for somebody who hasn't seen a ton of fighting. Like it was very intense, mm -hmm. and also, you know, some of the people were pretty young. Yeah, uh, yeah definitely. Uh, they might they might have been below eighteen to be yeah, honest. Definitely, uh, which was it was vicious. Yeah. So if you observe now, for everyone watching. They've gotten past the adrenaline dump, right? That's why they both slowed down. They were really going at it initially. Now it's kind of like, all right, all right, I'm in a fight now. It's extended. What do I do, right? So it's really funny to kind of see when they slow down, they're stopped blitzing. So after that blitz, is it kind of so? The, is the blitz kind of like, okay, let me catch, let me try and catch them off yeah, guard. Yeah, let me yeah. like you know. Uh, you know, feed off of that adrenaline, yeah, right? Yeah. But then, okay, now I've evaluated their style. Yeah. Now let me see how I can like get an edge yeah. and uh, yeah. you know really, really take advantage of the situation. Exactly. And what you see a lot is in more amateur slash beginner matches, you'll see that blitz more. The veterans, the people who fought a lot, know. Mm. Okay, usually you're not going to get lucky and knock them out within the first twenty seconds. So the veterans will just take their time, maybe even let them attack, and then sort of attack more. So um, what's interesting is they always say when Kung Fu steps into the ring, you often can't see the Kung Fu. This guy, the guy in red, you can see a lot of Kung Fu. He's holding his hands like Kung Fu. He's doing combos that are not the same as this Muay Thai guy. So, and that's why I wanted to show you guys this because half the time or 75% of the time when I show any sort of Kung Fu in the ring, people are like, dude, that's not Kung Fu. That's just bad kickboxing. But <laughs> this guy fights like how I would have fought when I was only doing Kung Fu back in the day. Like my hands would have been more down. I'd be swinging from my hips. I'd have interesting combos. This is exactly how I expected Kung Fu people to fight. So I'm going to take out with a low kick and this is round two. Um, not a big fan of how Kung Fu guy holds his hands. The Both his hands aren't doing anything really to protect his face. Um, if you look at how Muay Thai guy holds his hands versus how Kung Fu guy holds his hands. So, um, but there is something slightly deceptive about having your hands a little lower. But again, um, also Muay Thai guy is, seems to be mostly kicking low at the legs. Look at all those thigh kicks right there. So, Jerry, yeah. Jerry, is the, is the holding hands lower, is that meant to entice the other person to, to make the attack? And yes. Then Yes. Try, try and respond? Okay. Oftentimes it is because the person thinks your face is open, right? Mm, so mm, if you mm. have fast reflexes and you have a game plan, then holding the hands low actually might work. But then again, um, not everyone has as matrixy reflex as they think. Punches come much quicker than you think. Question, what are the what are the most common like knockouty sort of things or, or, or the power moves that are really going to like disable the opponent? I would say the most basic ones would be a straight and then a hook. Mm -hmm. Now, uppercuts are under are underrated. You don't see as many uppercuts sometimes in these matches, but uppercuts can definitely do it. Now, because this is MMA, a lot of times a kick to the face will do it, mm -hmm. right? But um, the problem with trying to kick at the face is that... It's you, a long move. It's a long move, exactly. Yeah. So that's why you see the Muay Thai guy especially just chopping at the legs yeah. and also kicking at the body. Mm-hmm. Are there ever, uh, I assume, so they're wearing, uh, they're wearing uh, helmets sort of and, mm -hmm. and, and mouth guards, but yeah. uh, <laughs> people ever seriously injure their tongue if they uh, get an uppercut or a kick I to the bet. face? I bet, because sometimes, especially if you're not wearing mouth guards, right, it, mm -hmm. you can bite your tongue, definitely. And, oof, so Kung Fu Guy is surprisingly connecting. He's got this really cool upper, like almost like sweeping uppercut move that I definitely have seen in Kung Fu. Um, I don't know what it's called in um maybe called the guan and i don't know what it's called in kung fu but also the kung fu guy's name is dragon pretty funny so i'm actually gonna say the kung fu guy sort of has an edge here i think if it went to the judges kung fu guy's gonna win he's doing very well so they're they're they're, they're calculating points yeah. like another okay and um the way muay thai scored is very different than how mma is scored but since this is mma i think they're probably going to calculate in like the 10 10 or 10 9 10 8 type of format in muay thai 
um, they they don't go like ten nine or ten eight kind of thing. It's it's a very different point system, dude. Kung Fu guy is wow. totally connecting. Like I was expecting this to be a slaughter, but actually Kung Fu guy is doing very well. Question, Jerry. At, mm-hmm. at what point do um, or how, how does the style change as the fighters get more get get more tired? I assume they have Ooh, to adjust their style yes. in order to. You know, protect, but also yeah. still, you know, attack and try and take the other person down. Yeah. So um, that's such a great question. One thing you will see is usually the hands start dropping. Mm. The other thing is, like the kung fu guy earlier, ate a pretty hard punch. Yeah. Um, they'll also start getting more and more sluggish. Like their reaction times are going to go down. Oh, Another thing is, you don't see too much head movement in this match. But if they had head movement, usually the head movement's going to stop a little. Yeah. Um, Sometimes as they get hit, their hands will actually go up more because they're gonna be like, "Oh yeah, yeah, let's let's stick to the guard." Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, um, you asked a good question, and the simple answer is it really depends on the fight. Some people you hit them a few times, they actually get better. <laughs> ah, because the, the, the adrenaline starts <laughs> yeah. flowing that much more. <laughs> yeah, it's just like we get into different modes. Like, dude, this kung wow. fu guy, as he gets tired, he's using more kung fu, which is really funny. The common trope is as kung fu people get hit and get tired, they look more like kickboxers. But this uh-huh. kung fu guy's looking more and more like a kung fu guy. <laughs> now, now, second ago, let's say he's doing these like really yeah. kind of wide punches. Yeah. Like that, that seems, uh, I mean, that seems not quick, right? Yeah. That's something you can guard against, it right? It seems like- very sus, exactly. But for some reason, it's working on the Muay Thai guy. And it goes back to... You know, you get tired, you get hit. Sometimes your reaction times wane, right? Mm-hmm. So this might not have worked during the beginning, but since Muay Thai guy's reaction times are going down, mm. he's able to, I guess you would call these like Chui or Sol. He's able to do these like weird Kung Fu punches. Ooh, weird as ouch. in weird in the, yeah, that was the really hard punch we wow. saw earlier. And that's another thing I forgot to say. Sometimes as they get tired or they get hit, they start wanting to grapple. It's natural. You don't uh, want to get yeah. hit anymore, right? Totally, totally. Boxers even do that. Yeah. They get hit and then they start clinching and then of course the ref breaks it. Up. Right. So I think that was the end of the third round. I think they're going to announce the winner. So Kung Fu Guy is the one wearing the dragon shirt. They gave it to Muay Thai Guy. What? Wow. Home court advantage, of course. This is uh, Thailand. Yeah, I yeah, honestly yeah. think Kung Fu Guy won. I really think Kung Fu Guy won. <laughs> Do you think the uh, judges are that biased? Yeah, they usually are. It's home court advantage. Like, mm. there's a little saying, if you fight in another promotion, you fight in another fighter's territory, you have to knock them out or make it very clear oh, that you wow. won. Or else if it goes to the judges, even though technically you won, you're probably not going to get the victory. But now, is it also the case where the higher the tier of the competition, the more fair the judges would be, even with home court advantages? I think it depends on the sport. Mm. I think Muay Thai and boxing, it likely is still pretty unfair. MMA, I think because there's many more ways to win the competition, it's harder to kind of be too biased. You know, if you take him down in MMA and you're hitting him on the ground for three rounds, even if it's biased towards him, there's no way they can give it to you, even if you don't knock him out or submit him or get him to quit. I think in the stand-up striking department, when it's boxing, when it's kickboxing, when it's Muay Thai, if it's home court advantage, you have to knock them down at least a few times or best knock them out. But yeah, if you just win through the audience or through everyone analyzing, but you don't make it very clear, the home court advantage is still going to go to them. But you and I are both tech guys. Yeah. You've seen uh, a computer and AI assisted sort of uh, judgment in other sports. Is that something that's made its way into fighting at all? I don't think, but I think that's going to be a game changer. Yeah. That's going to be a game changer because that's going to take out a lot of the controversy. And I think that's going to make the fight experience more enjoyable for us audiences. Because how many times have audiences thought some person won and the judges gave it to someone else? And even professional commentators after the match said, say, oh, that person should have won. So if you can take out that one factor that gets people to stop watching fights because the people that should have won didn't win, I think more people will watch the fights. I might also argue that they still keep it in the in the judge's realm, but you have the AI component feeding into that and there's a disagreement. That could almost incite a little bit of anger, but also people oftentimes still defer to the in-person judges. I actually think that could um, promote things a little bit more and hopefully make things a little bit more fair in the long run. But still those, uh, th- those controversies, I think, could create a lot of uh, fandom, if you will, or, yeah. or interest because it could foster a lot more discussion, yes, right? Agreed. AI versus the professional, yeah, right? Yeah. Like that's where we've been since uh, Kasparov and chess. Uh, yes. Yes. You know, back in the 90s. And think about how chess has evolved better as the computers have played humans. Like humans have gotten better yep. because we study how computers have analyzed chess. So in a very weird way, I think if we involve more computers and AI in the fighting experience, it's going to help us improve as fighters too. Yeah. 
did you see the recent thing? AlphaGo, I guess, beat the, the best human players. But then I guess now the in-person players have tried a bunch of very different strategies and now they're like coming back a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know the current status of that, but yes. I thought so, that was pretty interesting. And that gives me hope because people think, oh my God, you know, we humans are done, but we humans are amazingly adaptable. Our brain power is so underutilized. I saw Magnus Carlsen, who's the number one chess player right now, and he beat the computer engine and the reason he beat it is because sometimes if you do a quick enough game the computer doesn't have time to go through all of its algorithm totally, totally. so like it was either a three minute match or a one minute match but he beat the computer oh wow yeah he beat the computer and then also i heard about it is it chess 960 or yes chess 960 yeah yeah right so like you know this i think is going to be the next kind of evolution in terms of computer versus ai right because ai can master stuff that we've already done but it's maybe not always as good at uh figuring out the new things right so i love the idea of 960 right because then for the most part the computer doesn't have as much of an advantage right yeah, yeah. so then it's like how fast can you learn yes right yes which you know i'm not gonna lie I, I'm, I'm a tech bull and you know i think in the future right you know Computers are still probably going to dominate us on that front, but it's an interesting evolution of gameplay in various aspects. Yes, 100% agreed. And a final point to add to what you said is that think about when computers started playing Dota or League of Legends. They figured out all these strategies that humans didn't even think about, but then the human can learn from their strategies and get better. So totally. that's another parallel and another reason I think we should really be happy and excited where this is all going to lead. Yeah, one last thing on this front, and this is probably a call out to your viewers. Something I really want, I, I love a good Wikipedia article. I want a Wikipedia article that details all the different games that, that people play, mm -hmm. and then the current status. I want a table, the current status of where they are with respect to humans and AI. Oh, uh, ooh, that's And have good. that in like a nice, concise list. Exactly. That's, uh, that's something I'd love to see. If you know? We don't create that Wikipedia article, then maybe that's a website or something that Brentley and I do together. I yeah. think that'd be kind of fun. Cool. Cool, guys. We had such a great conversation that I wanted to show you guys who Brentley is. So this is my neighbor, and he's working on something really cool. So Brentley, tell me about what you're working on. Yeah, so a uh, buddy of mine from college uh, started this company called Big Hoops. Uh, it's like Top Golf for basketball. And some people say, what is that? Well, it's basketball entertainment dining, right? Get your own bay, you get food and drinks. And you're not, you know, like at a restaurant, you're not confined to a specific location, right? Or a specific seat. You're there, you're in, you're interacting, you're playing, you got various exertion levels, the hoop moves all around, different game types. And, you know, we uh, it adapts based on your skill level. So it mm. makes it really fun and accessible for, you know, whether you're the basketball couch potato or the guy who plays, you know, a couple times a week at the YMCA. So the first question I have for this is, do people have a time limit? Like, can they pay for an all day pass? Or is it like, okay, you pay, you come into the restaurant, yeah. two hours. Tell me about that. Yeah, so um, so it's probably gonna be more like a top golfy sort of thing where you book it for two hours. Two hours. Um, okay. So that way you can get food and drink. But, you know, things can be extended as well. Mm -hmm. um, now, similar to uh, things like bowling, you know, we're going to have leagues mm -hmm. and, um, you know, allow people to, you know, come in and play during off-peak times, um, you know, maybe even lessons in the future. But, yeah, you can sort of look at top golf and bowling as, uh, you, know, you know, paths that we're going to follow. I see. And because I'm thinking about golf and slash bowling and basketball, the – distance between the different tables the different people attending will probably be a little bit farther right than like a bowling or like a golf type of thing yeah, yeah yes and no i mm -hmm. mean obviously we want to be cognizant about uh about you know re real estate costs etc right yeah. but um you know uh to your point and actually when i came here in your studio uh you know, sound absorption is a big issue right because yeah. There's uh, you, know, you have top, things like Top Golf, which are open air, but in basketball there can be more noise, yeah. and so our, um, our 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 ball collection system, as well as the uh, noise cancellation stuff on the uh, ceiling and on the sides, is going to be very important uh, for uh... creating an experience where people can you know, hang out and still have a conversation, right? Yeah. That's one of the biggest things, right? We 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 call this like competitive socializing, you know, and uh, you know. The big part of that's socializing, right? So you want to be able to have a conversation with your friends, right? Not necessarily at a super noisy restaurant or a super noisy bar, right? Uh, sometimes I say it's like your own little like private bottle service, but you know, in a quiet, more cozy, intimate yeah. environment yeah. where you can you know get a little bit of exercise, play the second most popular sport in the U.S., and uh, hang out with your friends. You know, yeah, that's exactly. what that's what we're missing. We've been missing that. I mean, definitely since the pandemic, but you know, smartphones and uh, really kind of a decline in you know community and civic engagement since the '60s. So. Yeah. That's yeah. really the reason I'm involved, which is to bring people together. I'm so excited about this. I went bowling for the first time um, in March, and that helped me with my anxiety. A lot of viewers know, you know, I had a lot of anxiety last year. And there's something about socializing, but also 
not just socializing, but having fun related to a physical activity, competitive 100%. socializing. Like 100%. every person, it was a networking event on top of that. But if you can center it around competitive socializing, then people aren't just there to network. People 100%. can play, have fun, and network at the same time. Because as we know, networking is quite awkward. Like think about if him and I just all the time just talked, it'd be fun. But see, now we're making a video, right? Like, <laughs> like you have to have another activity. So I am it's so great. excited about your, um, what is it called again? Uh, big Hoops. Big, big, big Hoops. Bighoops.com. Mm -hmm. We're, uh, let's see, we had a beta test at a brewery. We got a location opening in Washington soon. Mm -hmm. And uh, our debut slash flagship in Atlanta coming later this year. So okay. If you're interested in getting involved, uh, feel free to reach out. Info at bighoops.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see, the last thing I wanted to say about that was, uh, Oh, yeah. You talk about uh, yeah, networking, getting together, whatever. It's nice to have another activity. And, you know, I, I lived in Ireland for two years, so I can appreciate going to a nice pub and, you know, having drinks with friends. And we're obviously going to have food and drink at, at, at Big Hoops. But, um, you know, it's it's nice to have another activity, right? Yeah. And especially something that's a little bit physical, right? Yeah, exactly. So I think there's a lot of good stuff for viewers in Washington State and viewers in Georgia. We got something to look forward to. So when the time comes... I will let you guys know. And then you guys, please go there, take a picture or something, send it to me. So we could bring Brentley back and be like, hey, look, some of the viewers came to your place. Cool, guys. Awesome. Um, he'll be back, man. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thanks so much. See you guys.